not be for us. Who can be against us?
wonderful Savior. Anybody know him to be a wonderful Savior? Mm. Because he saved a wretch like me. I know him to be that. Come on and tell the Lord. Come on and tell. Give the wonderful Savior, the Prince of Peace, the mighty God, the everlasting Father, the King of Kings, the Lord of Lords, our strength, our joy, our encouragement, our healer, our provision, our protector. Give it to him. He's worthy. Amen. Don't start praising him now. He's worthy, isn't he? He is wonderful. He's marvelous. He's glorious. And he's our soon coming king. Good morning, New Community Bible Fellowship. Good to see you on this Declaration Sunday. Amen? Amen. We are trusting God for great things. Amen? We're going to trust God to trust him like we never trusted him before. Obey him like we've never done before. To love him like we've never done before. And to live for him like we've never done before. Amen. Amen. So good to see you here. And if you're here this morning joining us online. Good to see you. Thank you for joining us. Prayerfully, something is said that will encourage you for this week. Amen. Well, one of the things that um, uh, we do here, uh, there's a visitor card in front of you, in the seat pocket in front of you. If you're here, you're a guest today. Uh, we want to make sure that we know you're here. So would you fill that out and drop that in the uh, offering plate when it comes by? And uh, we want to stay in contact with you, let you know what's going on here at New Community Bible Fellowship. There's some great things. God is doing great things. And uh, we want to stay in contact with you and see how we can serve you as well. Amen. Well, the Bible says this in, uh, in Mark chapter 9. It says some things come out by prayer and fasting. Amen. That there are only some things that come out by prayer and fasting. And so this week, beginning tomorrow, for the next 31 days, we are going to be on a journey. Amen? We're going to be on a journey to see God do some amazing things, to do some deliverance in our lives, to affirm some of those things that we just sang, that he is marvelous, that he's a deliverer. Amen? And so we're looking for him to move some mountains. And so for the next 31 days, beginning tomorrow, we'll be uh, on this um, prayer and fasting journey. And so you, as you came in today, you got this uh, guide, this prayer and fasting guide. Use that as you go through uh, this time. And uh, it will, we're, we're praying and we know it will be beneficial for you. So join us uh, on this journey. Amen? Amen. 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 And everybody say Wednesday. 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 Do, Wednesday. do not miss this Wednesday Amen. at 7 p.m. Amen. Amen. It will be our prayer and praise service. You will already be in the season of prayer and a posture of prayer. And so join us. Let's come together. One of the things we say here is we come together to pray. And we pray for one another. And so this, this will be a great time of worship, be a great time of prayer. And so don't miss this Wednesday at what time? 7, 7 p.m. Amen. Amen. Choir, let's continue in worship. Amen. Hallelujah to your name. Hallelujah. Anybody got a hallelujah in their spirit? Go ahead and give it to him. He's worthy of every hallelujah, every praise we have within us. Because he's so faithful. Yes, he is. Come on, say, I want to be close. I want to be close. Close to your side. Close to your side.
Anybody want to be nearer to him? I want to be near. Near to your heart, oh God. Near to your heart. Loving the world. Loving the world. Hating the dark. That's Hating sin. Huh. I want to see dry bones. Living again. Can we continue to give him praise? Come on, bless the Lord and give him glory. He is the great I am, amen? Come on, and we're declaring today that he is a mountain mover in our lives, amen? Come on, give him praise. Yes, this is the day the Lord has made, and we have great expectation. And so, I told you, I told you we were going to have a mountain. You see, we got a mountain over here. Come on, man. <laughs> New community is crazy, man. And you know, that even took bold faith to get that mountain made. Amen. 
And today is our day of declaring before the Lord, God, here's that tough area in my life. Here's that area that I had even said at one point was dead, but you said it's not dead. It's just sleeping. I'm going to come and wake it up. Come on now. Give God praise. Today is that day of declaration. I hope you came with a real spirit of expectation for what God's going to do. I want you to take your Bibles and turn to 2 Chronicles chapter 20 for the reading of God's word. This is the historical moment in the life of King Jehoshaphat and the people of Israel. And they had a great army, a great multitude of people coming against them. So large an army that there was no way they could beat their army or defeat their enemy. But guess what? Jehoshaphat and the people of Israel, they began to use the weapons of the Lord to fight against their army. And as a result, they got the victory. And God will do the same for us. So let's read together, begin in verse 1, 2 Chronicles chapter 20. It happened after this that the people of Moab with the people of Amnon and others with them besides the Ammonites came to battle against Jehoshaphat. Then some came and told Jehoshaphat, saying, A great multitude is coming against you from beyond the sea, from Syria, and they are in Hazazan Tamar, which is in Gedi. And Jehoshaphat feared and set himself to seek the Lord and proclaimed a fast throughout all Judah. So Judah gathered together to ask help from the Lord. And from all the cities of Judah, they came to seek the Lord. They came to seek the Lord. Father God, we bow in your presence and we're seeking you today, dear God. We're asking you, dear God, to do a work in our lives. We need to hear from you, Lord. We're not strong enough to fight our enemy. We're not strong enough to fight and move our own mountains. We know that the battle is not ours, it's yours. And so we're seeking you, just like your people in the Bible did. And I'm praying, dear God, deliverance. I'm praying for the ability to overcome any mountains or obstacles or fears that have been in our lives that have hindered us from the great things that you want to do in our lives. Show us how to fight so that we can be encouraged and not discouraged, dear God, so that we can turn beauty into ashes and you can turn our dancing uh, from dancing to, to dancing, from sorrow to dancing for your glory. And we'll testify that you are the reason that we are blessed. You are the reason that we have the victory. And we pray all this in Jesus' name. Can we say amen together? Amen. 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 You may be seated. Uh, they came to seek the Lord because they had a mountain of a challenge in their lives, Jehoshaphat. And listen, my main proposition that I want to just give to you right off the bat, right from the beginning, is that you can overcome any mountains in your life as long as you learn to fight with the weapons of God. Yeah. You can overcome any mountain that's in your life as long as you Learn to fight with the weapons of God. Now, listen, we all have mountains in our lives, amen? But there is no difficulty so hard that God can't give you uh, the victory. There is no setback that God can't bring you to a comeback from it, amen? There is no sin that's so debilitating that God can't deliver you out of it and still turn your life around, amen? There is no weapon that can come against you and proper, prosper against you if you fight using God's methods. And today, y'all, is Declaration Sunday. Oh, we've been talking about this. We are going to publicly say to our mountain, mountain, you have got to move, okay? You are in the way of what God wants to do in my life. You are impeding the purposes of God for my life, and at this point, you've got to get out of the way. Come on, somebody give God praise for that. Mountain, you've got to move. Now, here's the thing. Once you declare that, you have to be prepared to fight. See, Jehoshaphat, he overcame his mountain because he used the weapons of God and fought the good fight of faith. And we're going to learn the weapons of God today as we move into this season of fasting, as we move further into this whole thing of bold faith and declaring to our mountains they have to be moved. Jehoshaphat's mountain, a great army, a multitude of nations, they were coming toward them to overtake them, to destroy them, to enslave them. Sounds familiar? Our own mountains do the same thing to us. And Jehoshaphat began to cry out to God, and he laid his mountain before the Lord, and God gave him the victory that he could have 
over his mountain because he cried out to God. He should have been overtaken, but God gave him the victory. And some of us are saying, my situation with my child that I'm trusting God to get off drugs, uh, that's a mountain that I'm believing him for, it, it, it looks like it's not going to turn around, but I'm going to trust God. I'm going to put my eyes on the Lord. Can somebody give God praise for that? Amen. The doctor's report says there's no hope, but I'm going to put my eyes on the Lord. And so we are entering into this thing of bold faith. We're declaring with our flags today, God, move our mountains. We're about to enter into a fast starting tomorrow. And I want to tell you, this whole thing of that you can overcome your mountains if you learn to fight with the weapons of God, this is my testimony. Because for all practical purposes, I shouldn't be in ministry. I shouldn't be married to the beautiful, wonderful woman I'm married to. I should really be dead and gone. But at age 19, God saved me. And ever since then, he's taught me how to fight with the weapons of God so that he can continue to bless me and keep me going forward and moving mountains out of my life and changing my life and not allowing me to stay in bondage to sin, which I was at one point. But it's all because of what God can do. And we're going to be fasting. I'm excited about that. I received a, a, a letter, a report from one of, the, one of the missionaries that we support. I personally know this missionary. In fact, when I was in college, he discipled me. We sat down on a regular basis, and he would pour into me. And he's in China now, and he sends these reports over from time to time because our church support them over there. In fact, he and his wife, they've been here at New Community before. And uh, here's the report that he sent, and I just want to read this to you. He said, last year, he said, first of all, Stephen and his wife Grace have Buddhist parents living with them. Stephen and his wife, Grace, recently gave their lives to Jesus Christ, but they have their Buddhist parents living with them. Last year, Stephen's father developed a tumor in his armpit about the size of a baseball. His mother, Stephen's mother, got so mad at Stephen and said that by believing in Jesus, Stephen had offended their Buddha. And she pointed to the statue of Buddha as she told him this that was still on the pedestal nearby the bedroom. Uh, his father went to the doctor, and, the, and they thought it was cancer. And Stephen and his wife began to fast. And so did others who are involved in the ministry with Stephen and the ministry leader over there. They began to fast. He says, when he went back to the doctor two weeks later for more tests, the tumor was gone. I said the tumor was gone. Stephen's father was convinced that God healed him, and as a result, Stephen's Buddhist father began reading the Bible. His father has now read the entire Bible in less than a year and is now a follower of Jesus. They have removed the Buddha statue from their home. Come on. You can overcome any mountains in your life when you use the weapons of God. And God says we can do that through him who gives us strength. But if we don't learn the weapons of God and we don't use the weapons of God, we're going to miss so many things that God wants to show us and the great things that God wants to do through our lives. We're going to always be hearing about the testimony of somebody else, but it won't be our testimony. The story is told of a man who uh, was a Christian man all of his life, and he died. He went to heaven, and Peter was showing him around heaven. I mean, it was glorious. Everything was big. It's like Texas. Everything is big. Every room is big. Uh, streets of gold, showing him all this thing. And then one, one day, Peter took him into this room, which was really like a city. And the room went on and on and on. It had these huge boxes, these huge gift boxes tied with bowls. I mean, 20 feet high, 30 feet high, all different types of boxes as far as the eye could see. And the man said to Peter, Peter, what is this room? Peter said, these are the blessings that God wanted to give you, but you did not believe him. Amen. Anybody ready to have some bold faith? Because God wants to do something. And so today, we're going to make a public declaration, God, move my mountain. We're going to raise our flags. God, fix this thing. God, move this thing. God, give me breakthrough in this thing. And I want to show you, just in case you've gotten to a point today and you still haven't identified your mountain, we're going to go very rapid fire through here so we can save some time for our declaration ceremony, for our flag ceremony. But I just want to show you how you can identify your mountain. Jehoshaphat shows it to us right here. First of all, you can know you have a mountain when you're saying, God, this is formidable. God, this is formidable. God, this is big. This is overwhelming. It keeps growing bigger and bigger. It's getting harder and harder. It's getting more painful and difficult in my life. It is formidable. 
One of the ways you can know you have a mountain is that it's literally directly threatening to block what God wants to do. Now, the children of Israel know that God wanted to bless them, but all of a sudden you have this great army coming. Look at this in, in verse 2 of 2 Chronicles 20. It says that a great multitude, formidable, came against Jehoshaphat from beyond the sea, from Syria, Hazazan, Tamar, En Gedi. This was an alliance of nations. This wasn't just one nation. And one of the ways you know you have a mountain in your life is that it's so big and it's so overwhelming, it basically seems unbeatable. You just kind of accept your fate concerning it. It is what it is. The job promotion is never going to happen. It's just not going to happen. The business that I want to launch is never going to happen. The book that I really felt like God wanted me to write is never going to happen. That's when you know that's a mountain in your life that God wants to move. It is formidable. Next, Jehoshaphat identified his mountain. Not only God, this is formidable, but here's another one. God, this is fearful. This is fearful. In verse 3, when Jehoshaphat heard about this great army, it says he was afraid. You see that? He was afraid. When you begin to experience overwhelming negative emotions about something, that's your way of knowing this is a mountain in my life that God does not want to be there because God does not want me to live in the realm of negative emotions. God does not want me to swim in the pool of negative emotions. God does not want me to rhythmically, rhythmically day by day, live my life out in depression or whatever it is. You're in a relationship, and all of a sudden you find yourself angry all the time. That's not God's will. That's a mountain that God wants to move. You look at your finances and you feel like a failure day after day, week after week, month after month. That's a mountain that God says, I want to move. One more way to identify your mountain is you say, God, this is futile. So, God, this is formidable. God, this is fearful. And then thirdly, God, this is futile. Verse 12, Jehoshaphat went on to pray as he's praying to God. He said, oh, God, we have, listen to this, no power against this great multitude that is coming against us nor do we know what to do. Not only are they powerful over us, but we are powerless toward it. Not only that, we're really perplexed. We really don't know what to do. There's no way we can fix this. There's no way any man can fix this. I'm helpless. I'm powerless. And by the way, that's a great place to be, to see God do something. Amen? Amen. Just to humble ourselves and realize, God, I can't, but you can and so God says, identify your mountain. And for some reason, you've come up to this point and you haven't identified your mountain. Use these principles right now and just take a moment and pull that bold faith card out. Pull that flag out and just begin to think about what your mountain is. You may even want to pull the fasting guide out. We gave you an incredible guide today. We did not give you a weekly. We gave you a fasting guide to help you throughout 31 days of fasting. And I'm going to tell you, it has been put together so well by our team. It's not only going to help you for 31 days, but you need to continue to use this throughout the rest of this year as you're doing your bold faith journey because it's been put together. Everything you need to understand about fasting is there. But on pages 14 and 15 of your fasting guide, there is a list of all these different areas where one may apply to you to trust God for your breakthrough. I'm going to give you one minute to just pray and think there before the Lord and write down on your flag or your card if you haven't written down your bold faith area that you're trusting God for to move in your life based on the fact that something that's formidable, is something that's fearful, is something that seems futile, you write that down. You write that down. Thank you, Father. Bless you, Lord. I'm going to sing while y'all are while y'all writing, okay? Just bring a little worship, okay? Let me think of a song here. Amen. Uh, how great is our God. Sing with me how great is our God. And all will see how great, how great is our God. One more time, how great. How great is our God. Sing with me how great is our God. And all will see how great, how great. Is our God. Amen. Can you give God some praise?
Was someone able to identify your mountain? Yes, amen. You're writing it down. You're processing it. Listen, I want everyone in this room to take this journey with us this year. Doesn't matter if you are a member for, you've been a member for 15 years or if you're a first-time visitor. Listen, we all want to see God move in our lives and take us to a better place. And we don't want to be like that person standing in heaven and saying, God saying, this is all the things I wanted to do in your life if you would have just trusted me. And I love this because you can overcome your mountains if you learn to fight with the weapons of God. Because the good news is that all we've got to do is keep our eyes on the Lord. I don't know if you caught that in 2 Chronicles and 20 and verse 12, but the last part is really the key to what made Jehoshaphat successful. He says, hey, listen, we're powerless. We don't know what to do. But he said, look, God, our eyes are upon you. I'm looking to you, Lord. Our eyes are on you. Listen, here's the short answer to how you move mountains out of your life. Faith. Bold faith, unwavering faith. God, I'm going to believe what you say about me, what you have for me. I'm not going to look at man. I'm not going to look at circumstances. I'm not going to even look at myself. In and of myself, I'm too weak. I can't do it. I can't overcome this addiction that I've been trying to overcome in my own strength. But I am going to trust in the Lord, believe in God, put my eyes on the Lord, and keep my eyes on the Lord. Let me give you some of the weapons that we need, and Jehoshaphat shows us these weapons that we need in order to fight against our mighty mountain because we don't wrestle against flesh and blood. The first weapon is prayer. Prayer is a weapon. Jehoshaphat prayed. See, prayer is such a powerful thing because prayer puts me in direct, close connection with God. It partners me up with God to have spiritual warfare. Where, God, I'm asking you as I'm praying to fight my battle for me. I'm asking you, dear God, to heal my marriage because even though it feels like I should give up, it's a mountain that I can't overcome. You said you've ordained marriage, and I'm going to believe you for I'm asking you to heal my body even though there's a, a baseball-sized ball underneath my arm. I'm asking you. And so prayer is a critical component of fighting the good fight of faith. Prayer is a weapon. In verse 3, Jehoshaphat, the Bible says, he set himself, look at this, to seek the Lord. Seeking the Lord in prayer means he was exercising faith in God and dependence on God. And he was saying, God, listen, God, I need your help. In fact, he says as much in verse 4. He says, listen, God, they say they gather together to ask help from the Lord. Faith. See, we only pray to God when we're really depending on God. And we have to say, God, I've got to learn how to have greater faith than you if I'm going to see my mountains move. And let me tell you how we're going to know mountains are going to move this year. We're going to have to pray like we've never prayed before. We're going to have to really make prayer something that we do. You know how we have our favorite show? That's my show. That's my show. I don't miss my show. We're going to have to feel that way about prayer. That's my prayer time. That's my prayer time. I don't play with my prayer time. I don't miss anything for my prayer time. Because, you know, we'll kind of just forget about God to go hang out with the friends or watch something or, hey, I got tickets to the ball game, stuff like that. God says, no, I need you to really spend some time in my presence because prayer is a weapon. And then watch this. Look at verse 4. It says, not only Jehoshaphat, but all the people gathered to seek the Lord. They realized that the most important thing that they could do to show faith was to pray, so they came together. And they cried out to God. Jehoshaphat, being the good leader that he was, he made sure they were praying together. It reminds me of 2 Chronicles 7. If my people who are called by my name would humble themselves and what? Pray. And this is why it's so important that on this Wednesday, March the 1st, when we have this prayer and praise service, that everybody that's here right now will be here on Wednesday at 7 o'clock so we can come together as God's people and cry out to him and seek his face. Amen. Not only is prayer a weapon, but fasting is a weapon because Jehoshaphat fasted. In verse 3, it says that he proclaimed a fast. Fasting is so important when it comes to mountains being moved. Jesus himself said there are certain mountains that will not be moved. Certain things will not cha change unless there's prayer along with fasting. And so we're going to be entering into a fast starting tomorrow. A 31-day fast. It will end on March the 30th, that Thursday. We'll have another prayer and praise service on that Wednesday, March the 29th. And there is instructions in this booklet that will guide you through that fast very well. 
Make sure you read through this. We're going to be doing somewhat of a Daniel fast, and we know everybody can't fast the same way, but we can all fast. We can all kind of abstain from food so that we can enter more into the presence of the Lord because understand, the psalmist says, I humbled my soul with fasting. And when we humble our souls with fasting, that allows us to be closer to God because God gives grace and comes close to those who are humble. Amen. In fact, again, 2 Chronicles chapter 7 and verse 14, we often miss this, but it says, if my people call by my name, and the first instruction is to humble themselves. Fasting helps us to humble ourselves, to be quiet before the Lord, to say, God, I'm not going to focus on the external things or the temporary things like food, but I'm going to focus on the spiritual things. And so make sure you take the time to read through this and get instructions. And I'll tell you, for me tomorrow, I'm beginning the fast. My wife and I are beginning our fast. Tomorrow morning, I probably won't eat anything for breakfast, probably uh, tea or water or juice. My wife and I normally have devotion on Monday morning. We'll have some time in prayer and those type of things. And by lunch, I may have a salad. I may have vegetables. I may have fruit, something like that for dinner, because basically we are doing the Daniel fast, which is no meat. And so you begin to read through this. There's a lot of information that will give you instruction on how you're supposed to put together your fast. Some of you need to talk with your doctor about it because of your medical condition. But let's all go together and fast together. Can I get an amen? amen. Fasting is a weapon. When we fast, there's greater spiritual power. See, as we fast, the body is weakened and broken. And the spirit is made more in tune to God. God sees our sacrifice to him, and it speaks of our sincerity and our passion for him to hear our humble cry. And God begins to move. Fasting is a time of cleansing, to do spiritual inventory, to say, God, search me, like David said, and know my heart. See if there's anything in me and clean it out. And as you fast, you can begin to say, God, create in me a clean heart. Renew a right spirit within me. And even in this guide, there's a place where you can kind of do inventory on your soul. Lord, is there anyone that I need to forgive? Lord, is there any sin I've been flirting with? And just begin to cleanse yourself because God wants us to be clean as we fast. Fasting will break sin habits off you, destructive habits that you've had. Fasting brings deliverance. So one of the reasons we fast is to break addictions. And for some of us, our mountain is maybe some vice or some destructive habit we have. And as we begin to come before God and fasting, I've seen people go into fasting and get delivered from nicotine. I've seen people go into fasting and get delivered from uh, crack cocaine and all these types of things. God is able to break the yoke and to set the captive free. By you, by you fasting, saying, God, I want my marriage to work, work. God's going to see you in that situation and move mightily on your behalf. And so we know that prayer is a weapon and fasting is a weapon. Here's another one. Obedience is a weapon. Obedience in and of itself is a weapon. Amen. I want to remind you again, man. And God just started showing me how 2 Chronicles 7 is such an important verse. Again, if my people call by my name would humble themselves and seek my face. And here's the obedience. Turn from their wicked ways. When we intentionally obey God, when we repent, when we get closer to God, when we're more like God, God literally unleashes incredible power. Therefore, obedience in and of itself is a weapon. It is a weapon before God. And so Jehoshaphat and the people of Israel... They began to go before God and cry out about this great army that was coming against them, this army that was so big that they were powerless and they did not know what to do. And it says, after a while, the Spirit of the Lord began to speak. And the Spirit of the Lord spoke to one of the prophets. His name was Jehaziel, the son of Zechariah, the son of Benaiah, the son of Jael, the son of Mataniah. He's a Levite, and he began to speak. And in verse 15, here's what the Lord said through Jehaziel. He said, listen, and by the way, that's very important in this 31 days of fasting. You've got to really listen to God. He said, listen, all you of Judah and you inhabitants of Jerusalem, and you, King Jehoshaphat, thus says the Lord to you, do not be afraid nor dismayed. Don't give up on your mountain. God will move it. Don't get discouraged because of this great multitude, for the battle is not yours, but the battle is the Lord's. The battle is God's. The battle is not yours. And then he begins to give clear instructions. He says, tomorrow, verse 16, go down against them. 
and they will surely come up by the ascent of Ziz, and you will find them at the end of the brook before the wilderness of Jurel. Then he goes on to break down even further things in verse 17. He continues to speak uh, through Jehaziel that you're not going to have to fight with your hands and your weapons. When you go against your enemy, your mountain, the Lord is with you, so you can go out tomorrow. Just position yourself. He's giving very specific instructions. You just stand still. Watch God deliver you. Watch God save you. Don't get discouraged. God is with you. God's going to fight for you. Now, the thing I want to make about this is that there are very specific instructions that are given. When we are bold enough to say, God, I'm trusting you to do something big in my life, and then we're fasting about it, in this 31 days, I'm going to speak this over you. I know it's true. If you do it right, if your heart is right, in this 31 days, God's going to speak some very specific things to you. He's going to speak to you about some things he wants you to do. He's going to speak to you about some things he wants you to discontinue doing. He's going to speak to you about relationships. He's going to speak to you about a very thing. And when he does, no matter how weird it may seem, no matter how unconventional or awkward it may seem, it's because God gave Jehoshaphat and those guys some really strange instructions. You're not going to have to fight physically. You've got this great army, well-equipped, coming towards you. You're not going to have to fight. I just need you to be in position. It's like you're setting us up, dear God. Be sitting ducks. No. He's going to give you, he's going to speak to you. And when he does, you listen to him. Now, let me tell you one of the critical things you need to do during this fast and so you can hear his voice. One of the critical things you need to do is you need to uh, eliminate conflicting voices. So part of this 31-day fast has to be, Lord, I'm fasting from music that's explicit that I'm used to listening to. I can't be trying to hear from God and I got profane stuff coming and obscene. I'm, I'm fasting also from movies that are immoral. I'm fasting from social media that moves me more toward thinking sin than thinking God. I'm not saying completely. I, that's between you and God. But what I'm saying is God does not just want you to cleanse your body. In fact, that's not the most important thing. He wants you to cleanse your spirit. And so you can't keep listening to all the crazy stuff you're listening to and just being conformed to this world. So you've got to fast in your spirit, too, against all that stuff of the world so you can eliminate all those conflicting voices so you can hear the voice of God. God's going to speak to you, but you've got to be able to hear the voice of God. Can somebody give God some praise for that? If you agree. If you agree. And one other weapon is praise is a weapon. Jehoshaphat praised. In verse 18, it says Jehoshaphat literally got down on his knees and he worshiped. And as you read on, it says he lined up the worshipers according to how God had instructed him. Early the next morning, verse 20. Early, and see, that's another thing. When God tells you to do something, do it fast. Jehoshaphat didn't sleep in and find some reason to procrastinate and kind of move slowly. No, he moved. He got up early, set his alarm clock. I'm going to get up at 5 o'clock and do what God told me to do. And he told the army, look at this, verse 20. He says, all you got to do is believe in the Lord your God. I told you this is about faith. Listen, if you don't get anything else, you've got to understand that this is a faith moment for you when it comes to your mountain being moved that you have to grow in your faith to believe that God can do. Now, you've been beat down so much by people in your life, by the world, maybe by even your own thoughts about yourself. This is why you want to remove all those voices, spend this 31 days hearing the voice of God, reassuring you that he still has a plan for you. He's going to work that situation out for you. And so God begins to speak to them and prepare them, and they realize that praise is a weapon. The Bible says they went out against this army, in verse 21, with a praise, it says that they went out before the army. They were saying, praise the Lord. They were blessing God. They were singing a song. They began to sing, and God began to move. And, and, and God was so blessed by their worship, by their praise, that he moved mightily. And he literally brought confusion to the enemy. And the enemy started fighting against themselves instead of fighting against God's people. Come on, y'all. God said you're not going to have to fight. And the enemy basically killed one another. And so by the time they got there marching and praising, you know, we're just praising God, you know. He is able, God is able to do all this type of stuff. By the time they got there, look at verse 24. They looked over into the wilderness. When Judah came to the place overlooking the wilderness, they looked toward the multitude, and there were their dead bodies falling on the earth. No one had escaped. 
Sounds like a mountain removed to me. I said, sounds like a mountain removed to me. Listen, God was saying, I don't want what you think you can bring. I'm about to show you my glory. And that's the reason why the mountain hasn't been moved. You haven't trusted me enough. You've got to have faith to believe. If you do, if you use the weapons I give you, prayer and fasting and obedience and praise. Listen, you do that and, so, and, and somebody who's a secular person will say, what a waste of time. God says that, that we don't wrestle against flesh and blood. And when you begin to use the weapons I give you, you can overcome any mountain. I will begin to move mountains. I will begin to remove cancer. I will begin to heal marriages. I will begin to bring relationships back together. I will bring jobs into your, I will save people you've been praying for. God says I can do it. And all I need from you is a song. That's your sword. All I need from you is worship. That's your weapon. That's all I need from you because God says I specialize in showing up in the desperate moments and doing something that only I can do if you would just believe the report of the Lord. Somebody give him praise. Bless the Lord. Come on. Come on. Let's get fired up up in here. I don't even have time to tell you, but you can study verses 22 through 30, but all types of blessings came to them. First of all, they prevailed over their enemy. They got the victory. They had success, but also they prospered. In verse 25, God strengthened them and increased them and gave them prosperity and made them better. Also, there was protection. Verse 29, God gave them security. And then there was peace in the land. Verse 30, God gave them serenity. Listen, when you begin to fight with the weapons of God, watch and see what God's going to do. Now, I want you to use your imagination and think about this, that after Jehoshaphat knew this army, this mountain was coming, if he would have decided not to fight with the weapons of God. Think about what would have happened to them. The people of Israel would have probably gone into bondage that day. Now, I want you to think about yourself when you haven't used the weapons of God and I haven't used the weapons of God, and think about the consequences and the outcome of that. See, understand it's so important that we have a faith to believe God because we need this. We, we need it for our marriages. We need it for our kids. We need to see God do some great and mighty things. Can we give God some praise? <laughs> Father God, we thank you that you're able to do what you said you will do. We thank you, dear God, that we're in a season of being stretched in our faith. And it should be uncomfortable. It should be awkward, dear God. These are things we're not used to doing. These are things that seem ludicrous and ridiculous to the world, to the secular mind. But God, we thank you that if you be for us, who can be against us? We thank you that you're bigger than we are. We thank you that you see things that we don't see. And so we give you glory. And God, I'm praying for someone out there today whose heart's been aching and agonizing for a long time. God, this is fearful, and it may not be fear, but there's something hurting their hearts. They're sad. They're sorrowful because there's a mountain in their lives, and they basically gave up. I'm praying for someone, dear God, who said, God, this is just too big. It's overwhelming. It's intimidating. No way. I'm praying for someone who said, God, this is futile. I don't have the power to do this. I don't even know what to do. I'm praying you would reignite a faith in all of us. Help us not to be the same when we end this year as we were when we began this year. Help us to have a mindset that even if I fail, I'd rather fail on the battlefield than hiding in the barracks. Help us to reach out and trust you like we haven't before and trust you for the results. It's about and eyes are closed. If you're here today and you need to give your life to Jesus and he's speaking to you, that's the starting point of bold faith, of realizing that Jesus some 2,000 years ago died on the cross for you. If that's you, just right there in your seat, in your quietness of prayer, pray this prayer to him. Say, Jesus, I want to know you. Say that. And I open my heart to you. Say, thank you for dying on the cross for my sins. I receive you as my Lord and as my Savior. God in heaven, again, we thank you and we praise you in Jesus' name. Amen. amen. Come on, let's put our hands together real loud and give him praise. Amen. He's worthy. He's worthy of the praise. Amen. Amen. We're going to have our tithes and offering at this time. Can we celebrate that?
Thank you all so much for your faithfulness to give. There are four ways that you can give at New Community Bible Fellowship. We love it when you give right here in the sanctuary, just old school as the basket is passed. But also, that's not always conducive for all of us, so you can also go online to give at our website, newcommunitybible.org. You can click on the give, and it will give you instructions on how to do that. You can also text to give on your device, and we even now, a fourth way, have an app. Can you believe that? That's very exciting. I want to encourage you to download that app. There's a lot of great features on there that's going to help you to walk with God, understand the Bible, and just keep up with what's going on at New Community Bible Fellowship. It's really cool. A lot of people have worked real hard on it. It's all about outreach and just trying to connect with people all around the world. But that's another way in which you can give on that app as well. Again, thank you so much. God is blessing New Community. We're very grateful and we're very humble for all he's doing. I'm going to pray, ask God to bless this offering. We're going to have some worship, and then I'm going to come back up and lead us in our flag planting ceremony and our declaration of bold faith before the Lord. Let's bow. Dear God in heaven, we thank you so much for your goodness to us, dear God, and pray that you'd bless this offering that's about to come forward to you, and we pray for the person here who is struggling and going through hardship in their finances, and we pray you would bring a healing to their finances. Now, God, we ask you to bless this offering to advance your kingdom. In Jesus' name we pray. Amen. See the sun. 
Come on, give him praise. Every mountain, God is able to get me through it. Come on, give him praise. This is the moment. This is the time to declare that God is able to do what he said he can do. Come on, bless him and give him glory. He's been too good and we know he's able. And so far, we magnify you. We praise your name. We lift you up. Hallelujah. Glory to your name, God. We magnify you and give you praise and glory and honor. Can we all stand together? Can we all stand together? Uh, has everyone been able to take the time to write on their flag, their mountain that they're trusting God to move? Amen. If not, you want to sit down and there's a Sharpie there in the seat pocket and take a moment to fill that out because... I believe God has something for all of us, and we just need to be a people who are anticipating God to do bigger things, more things in our lives, to alleviate pain, to rebuke the devil, to strengthen us in our character, whatever that issue may be. We want to trust God for that right now. Amen. We're going to have a declaration together. We're going to make a declaration. It's found in your fast uh, booklet, but we're also going to have it on the screen. And we're going to declare this together, and then we're just going to shout and praise God, and we're going to begin to, like an army, march up here and put our flags on the mountain. I'm going to lead us out. I have a flag. I have a lot of flags, y'all, because I'm trusting God for a lot of stuff, man. The flag I'm going to be mounting in this service is breakthrough for my children. Come on, man. Come on. Come on. Come on. And I don't have to tell y'all all the details of that, but believe me, it's big, bold faith stuff for each and every one of them. Amen. That's what it's all about. And you've got something on your heart, too, that you want to believe God for. Amen. So let's all together do our declaration, our bold faith declaration. Let's put it on the screen and we're going to shout this. Now, you got to shout this. OK, and by the time you get to the end, you really want to be shouting to the Lord. We're making a joyful noise unto the Lord. We're singing a praise to the Lord. Are you ready on this day? I declare that God is calling me to greater faith. God is calling me to a bold faith that will trust him for victory over my greatest obstacles and fears. On this day, I present my mountain to God. And I declare with God's help, my mountain will be moved. I declare that nothing is too hard for God. He is all-powerful, creator of all things, and as his child, his power is working in me. Therefore, I dedicate myself to believe God like never before. I declare I will obey God like never before. I declare I will pray like never before, and I declare I will live for God like never before. I declare this is my season of bold faith. Now shout, shout to God. Hallelujah. Here we go, y'all. I'm serious. In Jesus' name, boom. Now, before we start singing, we're going to have those who have some special needs and a little bit more difficulty walking to be the first to go up and bring their flags. And then the rest of you, watch for our greeters and our ushers. They will instruct your segment when it's time for you to go. You will all go around this way and come up to the mountain in that way. They will instruct you. Just watch for instructions. Now, let's worship. Ask, ask, or think 
according to the power that worketh in you, that worketh in you, oh, God is able to do just what he said he would do. He's going to fulfill every promise to you. Don't give up on God, because he won't give up on you. He's able. Come on, put your hands together. He's able. Is able to do He's gonna fulfill Don't give up on God Cause he won't give up He's able If you believe that today put your hands together Worship the Lord as we sing. He's able. He's able. Now sing this part. Oh, 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 he's able. Y'all sing. Oh, 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 If you believe he's able, lift your voices and sing. Oh, 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 he's able. Oh, 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 oh. Come on, y'all declare. Oh, he's able. He's able. He's able. He's able. Gonna make it good. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Oh, he's able to provide. He's able to sustain. He's a healer. He's a keeper. He can do it. He can do it. Say he's able. Encourage yourself. He's able. Yes, he's able. On you, don't give up on God, cause he won't give up on you. Somebody say he's able. of you know Jesus reigns over every mountain over there he reigns he reigns over it hallelujah that's why we know it's done anybody believe it's done believe by faith every miracle that happened in the Bible it said that it happened because of the faith to believe it what happened hallelujah come on I will lift
believe that, come on and shout hallelujah. Because he's right. 
Come on and praise him. Come on, ain't nobody mad with the devil. That's what they say, ain't nobody mad but the devil. Yeah, he's worthy of praise. He's so worthy of praise. Our goal is to get a thousand flags, a thousand declarations. We have two more services, and of course, even throughout the year, others will come through and we'll continue to highlight our mountain and what we're trusting God to do. So others will be putting flags on months to come all throughout the year. And we're going to get a thousand declarations. We're going to get 500 testimonies by the end of the year, a breakthrough. And we're just going to see what God's going to do. Come on. I want to remind you that tomorrow we start a fast. And if you can segment some time this evening, if you haven't already done so, to just really prayerful, cons prayerfully consider how you want to go into the fast tomorrow. Use that fasting guide. It's really a phenomenal resource to just spend some time with you and your your spouse, if you're married, or you and your family, just sit down for an hour or so and read through it and talk through how you want to conduct your fast for the next 31 days, what you're trusting God for. I also want to remind you on this Wednesday, we are having a prayer and praise service, and we hope every one of you can be out. As we just really bring this fast before the Lord, bring our bold faith issues before the Lord, and just continue to cry out to him. We're not only going to be praying for our issues, but we're going to be praying for our country. We're going to be praying for our leaders. We're going to be praying for our community. We're going to be praying for families and just asking God to move. In fact, we encourage you to bring your children out. There's going to be prayer and praise for them as well. There's something for the whole family. But God says he wants his people to come together and pray. Amen. Let me close us out in prayer and we'll be done. Father God, we bless you and thank you for this very special service. We pray uh, thanking you that you've gone before us. You say the battle is not ours, it's yours. You tell us to keep a praise on our lips, to stay in your presence in prayer. You tell us to seek you with the fast and to obey you. Uh, in every way you tell us to. And you said, with that, dear God, you will give us victory over our mountains. I pray for victory for each of us here. We thank you for this time. Now unto you, our God, who is able to keep us from falling and present us blameless in your presence to the only wise God, our Savior, be glory and majesty and dominion and power. We all say together, amen. 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 Love you. God bless you real good, okay? Thank you.